When using Blender to model a 3D object, it's very common to add a subdivision surface modifier and enable smooth shading. This looks great, but it requires care when creating the mesh to avoid unwanted artifacts. Sometimes it can be pretty difficult to create complex 3D objects that don't have the unwanted artifacts. In this Blender video, I'll show you how to make this water valve that doesn't use the subdivision surface modifier or smooth shading. By not using either of these, I'm able to take some shortcuts that allow me to make this complex object quickly and easily. The key to making this work is to use an amazing node that makes separate meshes appear to be fused together as a single mesh. For example, these two cylinder shapes appear to be a single mesh, but they are actually two separate meshes. So let's make this valve. For this video, I'll be using Blender version 3.3. We'll start by deleting the cube. Let's make the handle first, because it's easy to show the modeling strategy that I'll be using. So add a UV sphere. Since we're not going to use the subdivision surface modifier, increase the number of segments to 128 and the rings to 64. Now tab into edit mode. Then rotate it 90 degrees by pressing A to select all, and then press R, then Y, then 90, then enter. So that we can select the vertices on the front and back at the same time, toggle X-Ray on. Now select these vertices. Then press G and X to move them on the X-axis. You can look up here to see how far I'm moving, scaling, rotating, extruding, etc. You can also look here to see my keystrokes. A lot of the times, I'll be holding down the control key while I move and scale. This lets me snap to the grid lines. Now select these vertices and delete them. Then select these vertices and scale them down in size. Next we're going to duplicate this mesh and rotate it 180 degrees. To make it rotate around the 3D cursor, change the transform pivot point to the 3D cursor. Then press A to select all. We can duplicate this mesh and rotate it all in one step by pressing Shift D, then R, then 180, then Enter. Now press A to select all and do it again, but this time rotate it 90 degrees. Next, add a cylinder and set the number of vertices to 128. Then scale it up in size. We're going to bevel the top edge, so after selecting the edge, just press Ctrl B. Then move it down. Then we'll do the same thing on the bottom edge and move this one up. Now scale it on the X and Y axis, but not the Z axis. You can do that by pressing S to scale and then press Shift Z to prevent it from being scaled on the Z axis. Now tab into object mode. We can toggle X-Ray off now. Let's name this object Handle. You'll notice that the mesh pattern is visible on the surface of the handle. You'll also notice that since there is such a sharp transition here where this cylinder intersects with this cylinder, that it's pretty obvious that they're separate meshes. So I'll show you how to make these separate meshes appear to be fused together as if they were a single mesh, and at the same time the mesh pattern on the surface will smooth out. To start, we need to make sure the normals are set correctly. So tab into edit mode, Press A to select all, and from the Mesh menu select Normals, then Recalculate Outside. Then tab back into Object Mode. Next we need to switch to the Cycles Render Engine. We're going to be viewing this in Rendered View, so we need to set up some lighting. So switch to Top View, and move the light source over here next to the camera. Then change the light radius to 3, and the power to 50,000. Now select the handle and add a material to it. Set the base color to whatever you would like.
Here is what it looks like in rendered view. We're ready now to add the node that will make these meshes appear to be fused together as if they were a single mesh. So switch to the shading workspace. Then to add the node that I told you about, press Shift A and select Input and then Bevel. The samples value defaults to 4, but I've found that this value tends to make the rendered image a little blurry, so I like to set it to 16. The radius value sets the width of the bevel. For this project, 0.15 works well. We need to be in rendered view to see the effect of this node. So now, watch what happens when I connect this node to the normal input. We now have a bevel between the separate meshes that make them appear to be fused together like they're just one mesh. You'll also notice that the mesh pattern is no longer visible on the surface of the handle. Here it is again before I connected the node, and this is after. The bevel node doesn't change the mesh, it only changes the normals. So for this to look good, there should be a good lighting source on the seams. If we look at the backside of the handle where the lighting is not as good, we can't see the nice bevel. By the way, for the bevel effect to work properly, all of the meshes need to be part of the same object. So for example, if I duplicate the handle and place it on top of the original handle, then there will not be any bevels between the two objects. But if I select them both and press Ctrl J to join them together into a single object, then there will be bevels between them. I'll undo this. Let's switch back to the layout workspace now. I'm going to change the roughness value to 0.1 to give the handle a glossy appearance. I'll also hide the handle for now so that we can make the valve. Since we now have a tool for making separate meshes appear as though they are fused together, making the valve will be relatively quick and easy. So switch to solid view and add a cylinder. Set the number of vertices to 128. Then tab into edit mode. Now press A to select all and rotate it by 90 degrees on the Y axis. Then scale it up in size. Then scale it only on the X axis by pressing S and then X and then scale it. Now duplicate and rotate 90 degrees by pressing Shift D, then R, then 90, then Enter. Then scale it down in size. And then move it up. Now select the ring of vertices by Alt-clicking it. Then move them down on the Z axis. Now we'll do some extruding, but we need to switch the pivot point back to median first. We're going to extrude and scale at the same time. To do that, press E and then S. Now extrude without scaling. Now press Ctrl-R to add a loop cut just above the center. Then add another one below it. With this ring of vertices still selected, press Shift, Alt, and click the top ring of vertices to add them to the selection. Then press E and then S to scale. Next, switch to Face Select mode and select the top face. Now press I to inset it, and then extrude. Then inset again. Now extrude. Next, we're going to open up the ends of the large cylinder, so select one of the faces. Then hold the Shift key and select the other face to add it to the selection. Then inset it a little. And from the Edge menu, select Bridge Edge Loops. Now tab back into object mode. Next we're going to add some bolts at each end of the valve and we can do this easily by enabling the Bolt Factory add-on. So from the edit menu select Preferences, click Add-ons, type Bolt in the search box, and enable the Bolt Factory add-on. Now when you press Shift A you'll have an option to add a mesh bolt, so let's click that. 
When you open the last operation panel, you'll be presented with a lot of options. I'll go through the ones that concern us for this project. The first option to look at is the model. Set this to NUT. The major diameter is the outside diameter of the thread, and the minor diameter is the inside diameter of the thread. Set the major value to 5 and the minor value to 4.5. The div count is for the circle resolution. I'm going to use 128. Then lastly, set the Y rotation value to 90. We want a flat edge to be on the bottom, so rotate it 30 degrees by pressing R, then X, then 30, then Enter. Now move it to the end. Then duplicate and move it on the X axis by pressing Shift D, G, and X. Next, make another duplicate and rotate it by pressing Shift D, then R, then Y, then 90, then Enter. Then scale it by 0 0.5. Now move it to the center and then move it up here. Next, tab into edit mode. We're going to delete the threads and make the top surface larger. So select one of the thread faces. Then press Ctrl L to select the linked faces and then delete them. Now switch to edge select mode. And while holding down the Alt key, select this edge in order to select the whole ring of edges. Then scale it until it almost touches the center cylinder. Then extrude it down on the Z axis. Now tab into object mode. Next, duplicate and move it on the Z axis by pressing Shift D, G, and Z. Then rotate it 30 degrees by pressing R, then Z, then 30, then Enter. As I mentioned earlier, this needs to be a single object for the bevel node to work with it. So with the nut still selected, shift click the other three nuts, and then the main body last. Then press Ctrl J to join the objects. Name the object Valve. It's common for this type of valve to have the size listed on it, so add some text. Then press the forward slash key on your keyboard to hide everything except the text. Then rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis. Then tab into edit mode and change the text. Then tab back into object mode. Now switch to the object data tab, open the geometry section and set the extrude value to 0.2. Then right click it and select convert to mesh. We'll get a better final result if we apply a remesh modifier to the text. So add a remesh modifier and set the voxel size to 0.015. Then scale it by 1.5. Now apply the modifier. Next, tab into edit mode so that we can scale a couple of these characters. Then select an edge on the one and then select an edge on the forward slash, and then press Ctrl L to select the linked faces. Now scale them up in size on the Z axis. Then tab into object mode and press the forward slash key to unhide the other objects. Now center the text. Then move it to the front on the Y axis. With the text still selected, press Shift and add the valve to the selection. Then press Ctrl J to join the objects. Next, we need the normals to be correct for the bevel node to work properly. So tab into edit mode and press A to select all. Then from the mesh menu, select normals and then recalculate outside. Now tab back into object mode. Now let's set up the material and texture for the valve. So add a new material. The base color that I'm using has a hex value of 7F, 5F, 3, 5. Set the metallic value to 1 and the roughness value to 0 0.4. Now switch to the shading workspace. Then add a bevel modifier.
set the samples to 16 and the radius to 0 0.15. Connect the normal output to the normal input. Next we're going to give it a texture, so add a bump node. Then add a noise texture node. Connect the factor output to the height input. Then connect the bump normal output to the bevel normal input. Now set the noise texture scale to 200 and the bump strength to 0 0.15. There are some areas of the valve, like the threads and the top part of the valve, where we don't want to use the texture or the bevel nodes. So we're going to make another material for those places. So from the Material tab, add another material and select this material. Click the New Material button to make a copy and name it Smooth. Then disconnect the bevel node. Next, let's lighten up the color a little. Now we need to apply this new material to the areas of the valve where we don't want the texture. So switch to the Layout Workspace and tab into Edit Mode. Then switch to Face Select Mode and Alt left click here to select the stem. Now select the Smooth Material and then click the Assign button. Next we'll select the threads. So select a face on the threads and press Ctrl L which will select the rest of the threads. Then shift alt left click here to add these faces to the selection. Then select the smooth material and click the assign button. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side. So select a face on the threads and press control L. Then shift alt left click here to add these faces. Then select the smooth material and click the assign button. Next we're going to unhide the handle and move it into position. So tab into object mode unhide the handle and select it. Now move it up on the Z axis into position. The valve is done so now let's set up the scene. So add a mesh plane and then scale it up in size. I'm going to scale it by 100. Then move it down to the bottom of the valve. Now add a material to it and set the color to the maximum white color. Now we'll set up the camera, so press 0 on the number pad for camera view. I'll zoom in a little. Then press N to open the side panel, select View, and enable Camera to View. Then press N to close the side panel. Now set up the view that you would like to render. Next we'll move the light into position, so press 7 on the number pad for top view. Then select the light and move it straight below the valve, approximately even with the camera. Then press 0 on the number pad to return to camera view. Now I'm going to add an HDR image to the background to use as an additional light source. So switch to the World tab, click the button next to Color, and select Environment Texture. Then click Open and select an image. I'm going to use this one from Polyhaven. I'll put a link to it in the video description. I'm going to set the strength to 2 to make it a little brighter. We're finished now and this is the final rendered image. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment.